This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Please know that you are loved, you are valued, and you are welcome as we worship the living God this day. Here at First Presbyterian Church Covington, we welcome you just the way you are. We welcome the young and the old. We welcome you if you're worshiping with us for the very first time or if you are sitting in the same pew you grew up in as a child. We welcome the energized and the tired. We welcome families of all shapes and sizes. We welcome the happy-hearted. We welcome those who are grieving this day. We welcome you if you have it all together this morning or if life is simply a hot mess. Whomever you are, we are grateful that the Spirit led you to this space to worship in person and virtually this morning. For those worshiping in person, your worship guides, you have them in your hand. Your hymnals are in the pew pockets in front of you. For all worshiping online, you can find our bulletins and our hymns under worship resources on the homepage of our church website. We do ask all visitors, whether you're visiting with family, you're here for the first time, or maybe you're a member, but you have updated information, we invite you to fill out the contact card that is located in the pew pocket in front of you, and then to place that in the offering plate when it comes by later on, so that we might greet you by name and follow up with you following our worship service today. Those worshiping online, please let us know you're here this day by commenting in the Facebook chat book. We want to extend a warm welcome to you as well. You will notice a worship guide insert with the give a bell. This is our handbell drive nonetheless to have another octave of handbells for our choir. And you are invited to donate. This is similar to our lilies, lilies and poinsettia forms where you can fill it out, do it in honor or in memory of someone, but we'd love for all to be able to participate in donating towards new handbells for our church family. So please know that's a bulletin insert this Sunday and these forms will be available in the entryway, the narthex, for the following Sundays this summer. I also want to draw your attention to other announcements located in our worship guide. Um, also, if you are interested in learning about our tech team, we have some incredible people behind the scenes who are making sure that our worship service, that you can hear it today, but also that people who are worshiping online so that you are able to join in our worship experience. And so if you're interested in being a part of our tech team or you know of a community member who would like to come and volunteer on Sunday mornings, we would love to expand our tech team so know that invitation is there. You will notice that Alice is not here this morning. I'm sorry to report that she tested positive for COVID-19 this morning prior to our worship gathering. So please be in prayer for Alice. She was planning on going to Montreat worship and music with us as well as her family. But Alice, we love you and our prayers are with you and I share this with permission from Alice this morning. So yes, we do have a team that will be commissioned during worship today. Some are already on the road headed to Montreat. Others of us will leave this afternoon or tomorrow, but we'll be commissioning those participants later on in this service. The next two Sundays, I will be absent. I will be taking my family vacation. And prior to the call of our associate pastor, Aaron, last December, we booked our guest preachers. Um, to come and fill the pulpit. So for the next two Sundays, we will have guest preachers. One is Alex Miller Knack, who is the assistant chaplain at Oxford. She'll be filling the pulpit next week. And our very own Larry Kennan will be filling the pulpit on July 3rd. If you have any pastoral care needs, Erin is in town, and I invite you to contact her. Um, she will keep me informed of anything um, that I need to be aware of, but I will be taking some time to spend with my family before soccer season hits in the fall. So with that, church, let us give thanks for the grand privilege it is to worship and glorify God this day. Please stand and join me in the call to worship printed in the worship guide. Our 
souls long for you, O oh God. Where are you? In raging wind? In trembling earth? In blazing flames? Our souls long for you, O oh God. Where are you? Meet us once more, O oh God, in stillness, in silence, in smallness. Come now, O oh God, enter our hearts and minds present now for you.
busy lives, we do not always make time to love, to pray, or to sing God our praises. We want to be strong, to, to seek control, yet we often feel out of control. We are rocked by the earthquakes in our relationships. We're burned by the fires of doubt. Forgetting what we cannot see, we ask, God, why have you forgotten me? We lack trust in God's presence when we feel utterly alone. We silence God's voice, trying to feel, fill our lives with more, more, busy, busy, this and that, that we fail to hear the still, small voice, the promise of Christ as our hope. So church, let us now turn and confess before a God who loves us, a God who forgives us. Please join me in the community confession printed in our worship guide. Gracious God, our sins are too heavy to carry, too real to hide, and too deep to undo. Forgive what our lips tremble to name, what our hearts can no longer bear, and what has become for us a consuming fire of judgment. Set us free from a past that we cannot change. Open to us a future where we can be changed, and grant us grace to grow more and more in your likeness and image. Help us hear you in the silence. Create in us a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within us. Do not cast us from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from us. Restore to us the joy of your salvation and sustain us with your bountiful spirit through Jesus Christ, the light of the world. Amen. Church, hear the good news. The very God who created you, the very God who claims you in these waters and calls you by name, says you are made clean. You are a new creation. Church, we are forgiven. We are free to try again. Dancing with the Spirit this day, God extends peace to us through Jesus Christ. And we are called to extend that peace to one another. So I invite you to place your hands over your heart and think about how you need to extend peace in your life to someone. And then extend your hands forward. And then back over your heart. And who in the world needs to know God's peace? Extend your hands out. So join, in, join me in saying, may the peace of Christ be with you and also with you. Amen. You may be seated and invite our children up front. Jesus says, let the children come. So come on up and young at heart, you are welcome to come as well. It is good to see you all this morning. Come on, friends. It is wonderful to have you in worship this day. Wonderful. Come on, Frank. All right. So I'm going to show y'all something. Y'all just sit down. Crisscross applesauce. You ready? Find a place, Frank. I know where the dots go. I think we forgot to put them out. I am so sorry. I know y'all love those dots. We'll leave them right there today. That's perfect. So friends, this is one of my favorite 
books in the whole wide world. Does everybody have a favorite book? Come on, adults, I know you have a favorite book. So this is one of my favorite books, and it's called Old Turtle. And you got to say it that way. Can you say it with me? Old Turtle. Let's have the whole church family say it. Ready? Old Turtle. And Old Turtle tells the story about creation and how we all were created. And all the people were getting along. Everybody wave to everyone. Can you all wave? Hello, friend. Everybody saw the child of God and everybody. And then guess what happened? One day, let me find my place, my friends. One day, the people forgot. They forgot how to live in community with one another. They forgot about the message of love and prayer. And so they began to argue. Can everybody shake their fist? So we've gone from being so kind to shaking our fist. They began to argue about who knew God. They began, began to argue about who knew what was right about God. They started to argue about where God was and whether God was near or far. And the people started to misuse their power. They would hurt one another and they even were hurting the earth. Until finally, even the trees started to die. So everybody's sad. Can y'all be sad? Let me see your sad face because everyone was arguing and hurting one another. The rivers and the oceans and the plants and the animals and the earth itself because people couldn't remember who God was and God's message of love until, are you ready? Until there came a voice and the voice sounded like the growling of thunder. Can y'all make the noise of thunder? Can you do your legs? Come on. The voice came like the growling of thunder. And at the same time, it sounded like a butterfly sneeze. What does that sound like? A choo. Just a small little sneeze. A choo. Can y'all do that? Yeah. So there was thunder and there was an a choo. And guess what the voice said? Please stop. Please stop. An old turtle was the voice of God. A wise old turtle reminded the people in a gentle butterfly, squeak, but butterfly sneeze voice to stop arguing and to love one another. And so it reminds me of the story in the Bible we are about to hear. And Elijah hears from God, but doesn't hear from God in an earthquake or in fire. Elijah hears from God in a still, small voice. Can you hear me? Can you hear my still, small voice? So the purpose of that story in the Bible and of Old Turtle is that God's voice can come from all different places, and God's voice can be really, really loud, or it can be really, really gentle. But what we're supposed to do, friends, is to listen for God's voice. Can you listen to God's voice this week? Maybe God is speaking to you through nature, through a turtle. Or maybe God is speaking through you through your father or your mother. Maybe God is speaking to you through a church member or through worship today when we sing. So let us be reminded today, like old turtle, to stop arguing and to remind one another that we have to love each other and to listen for God's voice at all times because God's voice reminds us to love one another and to care for one another. Can we do that? All right, let's pray to God to help us listen to, for God's voice, okay? Let's put your hands together. And church family, if you'll repeat after me as well. Dear God, thank you for your voice. Help us to listen and share your love with all your people. We love you. Amen. All right, friends, you can wiggle and giggle in your pews or you can go to the nursery, okay?
us now pray for God's wisdom and understanding as we approach Scripture today. Holy One, open us that we may hear you. Silence any voice in us but your own, so that we may clearly hear you and what you are calling us to do. Help us to hear and see you in new and unexpected ways. Amen. Our first reading from Scripture comes from Galatians chapter 3, verses 23 through 29. Hear God's word for us this day. Now before faith came, we were imprisoned and guarded under the law until faith would be revealed. Therefore the law was our disciplinarian until Christ came, so that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer subject to a disciplinarian, for in Christ Jesus you are all children of God through faith. As many of you as were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek, there is no longer slave or free, there is no longer male and female, for all of you are one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And a brief introduction on our reading from 1 Kings. The prophet Elijah preaches to a disobedient group of Israelites. Queen Jezebel is a worshiper of the God of Baal. And Elijah will not stand by the religious position of Queen Jezebel. He persecutes her false prophets, and she, in turn, threatens him with death. And this is where our scripture begins in the 19th chapter of 1 Kings. Hear God's word for us this morning. King Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah, saying, So may the gods do to me, and more also, if I do not make your life like the life of one of them by this time tomorrow. Then Elijah was afraid. He got up and fled for his life and came to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah. He left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a solitary broom tree. He asked that he might die. It is enough. Now, O Lord, take my life away, for I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the broom tree and fell asleep. Suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, Get up and eat. He looked, and there at his head was a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. He ate and drank and lay down again. The angel of the Lord came a second time, touched him, and said, Get up and eat, or the journey will be too much for you. He got up and ate and drank. Then he went in the strength of that food forty days and forty nights, to Horeb, the Mount of God. At that place he came to a cave and spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. He said, go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Now there was a great wind, so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks in pieces before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire and after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. 
When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. Then the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint Hazael as king over Aram. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And let us pray. O oh God, we ask that you would move and have your being. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts would be holy and pleasing to you, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. God was in the still, small voice, a whisper has the message of a still, small voice or a whisper ever impacted you? My youngest niece is a wise and loving soul. She's a second child and follows after a sister who is quite animated, outspoken, and takes control. But in my youngest niece's first two years of life, she was very quiet and reserved. I expected her to be outgoing like her sister, but she took more after her dad. She would sit quietly and watch, taking everything in. She did not want to be out of her mama's sight either. And honestly, I wasn't very sure if she liked me all the time. But on my niece's second birthday, she surprised me with a small whisper. We were eating lunch, and I was sitting by the birthday girl, and out of the blue, she reached out and gently touched my arm. She whispered, I love you. My heart just about melted. I had expected her to move and operate in these big, loud, jovial expressions just like her older sister, but she didn't. She touched my soul in an unexpected whisper, in a still, small voice. In an unexpected whisper, God spoke to Elijah, and God's word came in a still, small voice. The prophet Elijah was in a precarious situation, Queen Jezebel, wife of King Ahab, worships Baal, a foreign god. And Elijah, rightly so, preaches against Baal and gets Jezebel enraged. She threatens to kill Elijah, so he flees to the wilderness, running for his life. To say that Elijah is in a bad spot is to put it lightly. His life is on the line, and the king and the queen's men are after him. Elijah feels defeated, and I would argue, depressed. Elijah is so depressed that he doesn't see a way out, and he even asks God to take his life away. My guess is that many of us here have been touched by suicide. Suicidal thoughts or thoughts of self-harm are not something to ignore and require immediate attention from medical health professionals. So if you or someone you know has these thoughts or feelings of self-harm, please reach out to me or to Pastor Neely or to someone that you know or a trusted friend and know that you are not alone. Theologian Carrie Mitchell says, this story reminds us that although we may feel separated from God and are tempted to give up on both ourselves and our mission, God is always providing for us. Why would God do otherwise? 
After all, God created each and every single one of us uniquely for a purpose. We water the expensive plantings that we put into our summer gardens and we take interest in their flourishing, right? So how much more does God want to provide for our blossoming? Elijah is facing these feelings of strong feelings of inadequacy. And like Moses before him, he doesn't think that he's good enough to care for the Israelites. He doesn't think that he's up to the task of providing religious leadership for Israel. He's just not as qualified as the other prophets, he thinks, and he doesn't have what it takes to lead God's people. So Elijah withdraws to the wilderness, signifying a spiritual and emotional desert. It's important to note what happens in Elijah's spiritual and emotional deserts. God, through the form of an angel, appears to him and provides for him. God nurtures Elijah, giving him the sustenance that he needs for his body and his spirit. The angel of the Lord comes to Elijah twice and said, Get up and eat, and gave him food and water. God's provisions give Elijah the nourishment that he needs to get up and carry on. He is able to journey 40 more days until he reaches the Mount of Horeb, the Mount of God. And then there at the Mount of God, Elijah hears the Lord's voice ask him, What are you doing here, Elijah? God reaches out to him in this time of need. Elijah admits his feelings of defeat, telling God that he is being persecuted. And Elijah is then told to stand on the side of the mountain before the Lord because the Lord was about to pass by. Elijah looked for God in the strong wind, but God was not there. Elijah looked for God in the earthquake, but God was not there either. Elijah was not found in any of the typical places where one might expect to find the Lord in those days. God was not in the obvious symbols that normally reveal the Lord's presence. Instead, the sound of sheer silence came upon the mountain and surrounded Elijah. Some translations describe the sound of sheer silence as a still, small voice. God was found in the still, small voice, in the unexpected. God does not always appear in the ways that we expect. God does not always appear in the grandiose big gestures or the flashing neon lights that we often look for and expect God in those places. We limit God when we demand that God appear exactly when and how we want God to show up. When we stop looking for God in the seemingly obvious places, God exceeds our expectations. In Elijah's story, it is only when God enters the silence of Elijah's broken heart and fractured soul that Elijah gets up. It's when God enters the heavy silence that Elijah feels. It's only when God's self becomes the silence. Only then does Elijah begin to believe that God understands him and wants to help him. Elijah doesn't need the fire and the wind, the rattling and the roaring. He needs to know that he is loved. He needs to know that he's held by hands tender and sensitive enough to hold the broken pieces of his life and then gently put them back together with the glue of grace. This story speaks volumes about God. God shows up for Elijah. Elijah is in desperate need of strength and reassurance and sustenance, and God shows up. God doesn't show up exactly how Elijah might expect God to, but nonetheless, God shows up. The Lord shows concern by asking the question, what are you doing here, Elijah? 
God sees that his child is hurting and God appears to him personally. And the Lord enables Elijah to get up and go on his way, giving him a new charge and commission. You may be thinking, that's great that God showed up for Elijah, but God has not shown up for me yet. I hear you and I see you. You are not alone. God hears you and sees you. Trust that God is working for you and with you even when you can't see it or feel it. God may not show up in the wind or in the earthquake or in the fire, but God will surely show up. It may not be how you expect it, but God will surely show up. There's an old story that goes like this. A fellow was stuck on a rooftop in a flood. He was praying to God for help. Soon a man in a rowboat came by and the fellow shouted up to the man on the roof, jump in, I can save you. The stranded fellow shouted back, no, it's okay, I'm praying to God and God is going to save me. So the rowboat went on. Then a motorboat came by. The fellow in the motorboat shouted, jump in, I can save you. To this, the stranded man said, no thanks, I'm praying to God and God is going to save me. I have faith. So the motorboat went on. Then a helicopter came by and the pilot shouted down, grab this rope and I'll lift you to safety. To this, the stranded man replied, no thanks, I'm praying to God and God is going to save me. I have faith. So the helicopter reluctantly flew away. Soon the water rose above the rooftop and the man drowned. He went to heaven. He finally got his chance to discuss this whole situation with God, at which point he exclaimed, I had faith in you, but you didn't save me. You let me drown. I, don't, I just don't understand why. To this, God replied, I sent you a rowboat and a motorboat and a helicopter. What more did you expect? We must remain open to God's communication vehicles rather than our preconceived expectations. God defies our expectations. Theologian Carrie Mitchell says that when Elijah first responded to God's calling, he did not expect to have his life threatened by Queen Jezebel and then protected by an angel. Few of us would expect that. Instruction manuals or how-to books lay out step-by-step -step detailed instructions on how to build a boat or how to assemble a desk. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we could have such a detailed overview of what to expect for each of life's major transitions? Just imagine what to expect when my high schooler graduates, what to expect when I retire, what to expect when my parents and I age. We are a people who like to know what to expect. But when we stop expecting God in the seemingly obvious places, God exceeds our expectations. So I invite you to stop looking for God in the obvious places and try looking for God in the unexpected. God showing up may not lead to an easy path, but I can assure you it will be worth it. Professor Scott Hosey says that Elijah did not belong there in that cave, hiding out in despair, because God had plans. God still had God's people, and Elijah was not alone. He never had been. And because of that, God's final piece of Elijah was pretty simple. Get back to work. It was God's way of saying, look, it's never going to be easy. Ministry and the life of discipleship will rarely be simple. The journey is too much for you, but I've always got more going on, more resources, more people than you can imagine. 
So go back to work, Elijah. Go back to your ministry, discouraging, though it may look at times. But remember that I am with you always. Go back to work, and I will be with you. Some days I may be no more than a whisper in your ear, a tickle on the back of your neck, but I will be with you. Folks, we are not alone, and that is good news because this world can be a pretty tough place at times. Dear people we love die suddenly. Deeply cherished jobs get taken away from us. We get downsized into unemployment and are left feeling empty and futile. Our fondest dreams turn to dust in our hands. And sometimes we look to the church for comfort, but only find cold shoulders. This is a rough world in which to live like Jesus and to live for Jesus. And if we try to make it on our own, then I bet that we too could end up running for our lives as soon as we encounter the criticisms and the hard knocks of life that inevitably will come. But Elijah stands as a reminder that it is never about us. It is never about us. For us, discipleship will always be a journey that is too much for us. The journey is too much for us alone. If we rely on our own strength, our own talent, or our own intelligence, we will surely fall into despair. The journey is too much for us alone. Elijah reminds us of something else, that God is always there with food and drink, which for us today is not cakes over open coals or a jar of water, but the very body and blood of Jesus Christ in the Lord's Supper. God's Spirit comes to us too and tells us to take and eat, take and drink. Remember and believe that Jesus was sacrificed to forgive our every sin and to now energize us in our every act of service in Jesus' name. On our own, the journey is surely too much, but it will never be too much for God, and for God's Christ, and for God's Holy Spirit. Now to the one who is able to accomplish abundantly far more than we could ever ask or imagine, to God be the glory in the church and in the world forevermore. Amen.
reading God's word, read and proclaimed, let us join in affirming our faith using the affirmation of faith printed in our worship guide. I invite you to join me as we read from a brief statement of faith. Church, what do we believe? In life and in death, we belong to God. Through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, we trust in the one triune God, the Holy One of Israel, whom alone we worship and serve. We trust in Jesus Christ, fully human, fully God. We trust in God, whom Jesus called Abba, Father. We trust in God, the Holy Spirit, everywhere the giver and renewer of life. With believers in every time and place, we rejoice that nothing in life or in death can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. You may be seated and we invite all of the um, on-treat worship and music participants to come forward, please. <clears throat> Y'all can come love each other right here. Get front and center so everybody can see you. <laughs> Church, this is a wonderful, wonderful opportunity um, for us to commission um, these people who are going and know that some are already on the road this morning. Some arrived last night, actually. I know some left yesterday. And so we are excited to acknowledge that they may be going in body, but we are going with them in spirit as their church family. And so therefore, we are called and invited to commission them this morning. So hear these words. As many of you were baptized into Christ, have clothed yourself into Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek, there is no longer slave or free, no longer male or female, for all of you are one in Christ Jesus. How very good and pleasant it is when sisters and brothers live together in unity. As participants in the Montreat Worship and Music Conference, I encourage you to watch and listen for the ways God will be calling each of you at Montreat in worship, in play, in music, in breaking bread, in small group discussions, in informal conversations, in friendships new and old, and in the natural beauty of God's creation called Montreat. But remember that God doesn't call you only as an individual, but as members of the body of Christ and representatives of this congregation. And so I urge you to listen, to listen to the voices of fellow church members who will be there alongside you as you gather around the table, as you lift your voice in song and experience the holy thin space that is Montreat. Therefore, we ask you the following questions as you go forth to the Montreat Worship and Music Conference as members of SP, FPC Covington and as children of God. Will you be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying his word and showing his love? If so, please say, I will, with God's help. Do you welcome the responsibility of representing First Presbyterian Church Covington, and will you seek to follow Christ in all that you say and do at Montreat? If you do, say, I will, with God's help. And now, turning to our church family, do you, the members of First Presbyterian Church, <clears throat> confirm the call of God to our brothers and sisters to grow in faith and learning and fellowship by participating in Montreat Worship and Music Conference. If so, please say, we do. we do. And will you support them with your prayers while they are away? Welcome them warmly when they return and pester them enthusiastically for stories about their experience. <laughs> if so, please say, we will. <laughs> Let us pray. 
Friends, you are commissioned as representatives of the body of Christ in this place to the Montreat Worship and Music Conference. Whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God through him. Amen. Amen. Friends, it's exciting that we get to share in this journey together, so traveling mercies as you go. May the grace and peace of God guide you. Amen. You may take your seat. Thank you all. Not only do we hold our Montreat conferees in our prayers, we are reminded this day to pray for one another. So I encourage you to look at your um, bulletin insert at our prayer concerns and celebrations and to hold on, hold the hands of our congregation in prayer. With that, let us go to God in prayer. God of the still, small voice. As you come, as we come to you in these moments, we ask you to refresh our spirits. We confess that we have too often sought nourishment in food that does not satisfy, in drink that does not quench our deepest thirst. You know, O oh Lord, how we wander into winding valleys of misdirection and lose sight of you, our Good Shepherd. Guide us anew, gracious Lord into those green pastures, into that living water that you provide generously and without cost. Although we readily acknowledge your power, O oh Lord, we can sometimes lose a lively assurance in your goodness and mercy. And so we find ourselves carrying burdens of regret of what we have done and what we have left undone. Reassure us that in your redeeming love, you redeem even our life history as you shape us finally into the image of Christ. Remind us this day, gracious Lord, of your steadfastness throughout our lives, your strength in, per in preserving us in times of uncertainty, illness, loss, and tragedy, your faithfulness in finding us and bringing us back home. Your presence during times when we have lived in fear, fear of what is happening and fear of what might happen. We especially today pray for our siblings in Christ who have experienced shootings during church. Specifically, we pray for the St. Stephen's Episcopal Church in Alabama this morning. Within all our difficulties, speak again to the winds and waves of our anxious hearts your word, peace. Be still. Do not be afraid. On this day, when we celebrate father figures in our lives, we give a special thanks, God, to the men in our lives who have provided gentle and faithful care for us. We pray for those who celebrate Father's Day today with cookouts and presents. We pray for those who long to feel the touch of their father's hand or hear their father's voice one more time. We pray for those who grieve this day, and for this day is really hard. And we ask, God, that you provide comfort and care. Thank you for all father figures in our lives, school teachers and Sunday school teachers, tutors and coaches, grandparents and uncles. We give you thanks for all who guide and shape your children this day. So in these days of people struggling for fairness and freedoms, we recognize Juneteenth as a day towards freedom for all people. Grant to leaders of our countries and cities, of corporations, and of this congregation the wisdom and goodwill and vision that ultimately come from you, God. Help us all to hear your still, small voice. Stay always beside us, our loving shepherd, in our times of danger, guard our lives. In our times of temptation, guard our souls. May we always and in every circumstance acknowledge you as Lord of our lives. Hear, O oh Lord, these thoughts and unspoken prayers of our hearts here today. And now we join our voices, praying the words of the Lord's Prayer, praying as one body, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Be zealous in shouting your praises to the Lord, remembering the strength of God's love and the promise of Christ's help. Let us share who we are as a church in the world. With open arms, let us join with one another as we express our faith through our gifts of love. You're invited to give this day by the text option using our Realm app or placing your offering in the offering plate as it comes by. And a reminder, if you have filled out a contact card, to place that in the offering plate as well. Let us give with cheerful hearts this day. Church, I invite you to be seated as we enter into a time of prayer of gratitude. This will be a popcorn, one-word prayer. So we invite all to participate out loud by saying one-word prayers. I will start us, we will open it up, and you again can popcorn it, and then I will close us. So let us go to God in prayer. How marvelous it is, O oh God, to glorify you this Sabbath day. There is so much to be thankful for. We're thankful for your still, small voice. For the way we know that we are not alone because you are always with us. So hear us, O oh Lord, as we lift up our one-word prayers of thanksgiving to you.
And all God's children say, Amen. go out into the world in peace, have courage, hold on to that which is good, return no one evil for evil, strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the suffering, honor all people in the power and love of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.